Instant Ralston and regular Ralston, the hot whole wheat cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are flying over Crater Valley on Planet X when they sight Prince Baccarati's ship on the ground. Quickly landing, they see the prince struggling with a native and rush to the rescue. Is Baccarati all right, sir? He's beating that old man. He's trying to drag him into a ship. Let's get him. All right, Baccarati, break it up. I'll get his ray gun, sir. Let go of me, Corey. Commander, the old man's unconscious. Baccarati knocked him out. Getting pretty brave, aren't you, Baccarati? Beating up an old man all by yourself? Not quite by myself. Get them, Malengro. Use your paralyzer ray. Hey. You got both of them, Malengro. This is the last time Cordy will meddle in the affairs of Panatech. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure under the sea of Panatech. Hi, I'm a member of the Blue Demons Club here in Los Angeles, and this is Dick Beale. Hiya. Boy, there's lots of excitement around our club. All us blue demons are trying to win that big rocket ship clubhouse in the Name the Planet contest. And the $1,500 that comes with it. Yeah, what a prize. A huge rocket clubhouse on wheels and $1,500 cash. We blue demons have entered the contest four times already, so we're way ahead of some of the other clubs. And we're going to get lots more entries, but there's not much time. Gee, come on, let's get down to the Weatherbird shoe store and pick up some more entry blanks. Wait a minute, I want to tell the guys about the rocket clubhouse. What a giant. 10,000 pounds, 35 feet long. It's bigger than an airplane. Wow, we and all our dads are going to take turns driving the big truck that pulls the rocket clubhouse and take all us blue demons on camping and hiking trips. And how about those 750 Schwinn Varsity bikes being given away? Schwinn's the swellest bike ever. It's got three-speed gear shift, so it goes like everything, and two-wheel handbrakes, so it stops plenty fast. Hey, come on, will you? we got to get down to the Weatherbird shoe store. Yeah, and you get more of those swell space coins. You get three space coins absolutely free and an album, too, when you get your Name the Planet contest entry blank from the Weatherbird shoe dealer. And there's another space coin in every package of Pot Ross and cereal. Hey, quit talking so much. Let's go to the Weatherbird shoe store. There's not much time left to enter the contest, and we got to make sure the Blue Demons win that rocket clubhouse. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Gang, get your pals together. See your Weatherbird shoe dealer and get lots of swell space coins and contest entry blanks absolutely free. You don't have to buy a thing, but hurry, time's getting short. Get going on the Name the Planet contest today at your Weatherbird shoe store. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, Under the Sea of Planet X. For the past two days, Space Patrol ships and some commercial ships have picked up a strange spacephone signal. It registers for a few seconds and then disappears. Right now, in Commander Corey's central office on the man-made planet Terra, Buzz and Happy sit before a sensitive receiver as the cryptic signal streams in from across the vastness of space. What is it, sir? The code signal. It's been picked up repeatedly from Planet X. Planet X? Notice the pattern. It's a constant repetition of three dashes. A homing signal for Baccarati's scout ship. But Major Robertson thought at first that it comes from a point in the great sea of Planet X, far away from any of Baccarati's known installations. On an island, then. Very likely. Somebody's in distress on Planet X. Let's get to our ship, Happy. Meantime, in the tower room of his castle on Planet X, Prince Baccarati reclines casually on his ornate throne, gazing admiringly at a flashing jeweled medallion. His chief counselor, Dr. Malengro, is patiently waiting to be recognized while the haughty prince fondles a cluster of jewels. Beautiful. Exquisite. Von Malengro, what is it? A report from the detachment of guards, Your Highness. They're on the trail of the escaped slaves. Oh, indeed. Uh, have they been recaptured? Not yet, sire. But the guard captain thinks the natives are attempting to return to their home region in Crater Canyon. Yes, yes, all right. Malengro, what do you think of this medallion? Excellency, this is magnificent. What did you get? A guard took it from one of the slaves, the one that was recaptured just after the escape. Amazing. A native with this? With jewels like this, I can 
I can hire more agents. Hundreds of them. Of course. It can solve all your Excellency's financial problems. Let's go down to the dungeon and talk to you. It's in the next cell, Malengro. A big fellow, isn't it? Yeah. We'll leave the door locked in case he becomes violent. Your Highness, might I suggest you mind the fellow? Perhaps he will be more cooperative. Well, uh, you talk to him then. Very well, sir. Tamu, son of Chief Ramad, His Highness Prince Bakarati is impressed by the medallion. He would like to know where you got it. It was given to me by my father. And where did he get it? From his father. It is handed down by each chief to his eldest son. Generation I after... don't care about that. Where did it come from originally? From the ancient one. And just who are the ancient ones? The givers of all knowledge. The benevolent masters of this world and the world beyond the sun. The exalted... Stop prattling! Where are these ancient ones, whoever they are? It is not given to me to know. For I am not a chief. Only a chief may know the secret of the ancient one. This young upstart is trying to make a fool of me. Blango, summon the guard. I'll beat this precious secret out of him. There is another way. I want to know where these jewels came from. Perhaps his father, the chief, will reveal the secret to get his son back safely. Hmm. Besides, if this fellow is telling the truth and only his father knows where the jewels came from, maybe we can force him to reveal the secret. Excellent. We'll take this, this time with us to prove we have him. Guard! Guard! I'm not... A few hours later, Buzz and Happy are scanning the surface of the great sea of Planet X in their view scopes searching for the source of the mysterious signal. Their spacephone receiver is adjusted to pick up the code whenever the ship crosses the directional beam from the transmitter. Whoever calculated that fix on the signal must be way off, sir. We're right over the region where it's supposed to come from. Well, we've got to allow for error, Happy. Remember, the fix was computed from positions millions of DUs from Planet X. Yeah, right. There it is. gone. Cross the beam. We'll circle back again. Sure must be a narrow beam if we crossed it that quick. You get any sort of a fix on it at all? I'll check the indicator, sir. Hmm, something's mighty strange here, Commander. The signal came from somewhere right below us on the Great Sea, but there's no island and no surface craft. Watch the viewscope carefully, Hap. Yes, sir. There it is. Look, there's nothing down here. And our viewscope is sensitive enough to pick up a very small boat. What do you make of it, sir? That's what it must be submerged. Clever idea. The lessons that can't have Bakarati's scouts ever located. Yes, sir, but who's sending the signal? Where are they? Probably they're hiding out close to the coast. We'll circle low and give them a chance to see our space patrol insignia. There's a valley a few miles inland, sir. The valley and the foothills are covered with farms and orchards, even inside some of those craters. That means people, Happy. Probably very intelligent natives. And farming people are usually peaceable. And whoever escaped from Baccarati could be living with the natives, They're waiting for the space patrol to pick up that signal out there in the ocean. At least the natives may know if any strangers have passed through recently. We'll head for those traitors, Pat. Meantime, Prince Baccarati has landed his atmosphere ship near the edge of a crater in the valley, some distance from a group of cliff dwellings. Fearful of the reaction of the natives, the prince has sent Dr. Malengro alone to the village to get the chief. A few moments later, Malengro returns with an old man whose regal bearing and fine spun cloth robe are evidence of his important position in the tribe. As he approaches Baccarati, the chief extends his arms to his sides, palms outward, in a gesture of friendship. Baccarati merely stands stiffly, a sneer on his face as the old man speaks. I am Ramit, chief of the people of the Valley of Craters. I bid you welcome. Let's get down to business, Ramit. Ever see this before? It belongs to my son, Tamu. He was captured by the tyrant. You have seen my son? Yes. He's in my ship. This is joyous news. Tell me your name that my people may sing in praise of you. Malenko, didn't you tell him who I am? I, um, I thought it best to withhold that information, sire. Very well. Ramad, I'm Prince Baccarati. You are the tyrant. It is a harsh word to call a gracious prince who has brought your son back to you. I will gladly apologize when I embrace my son again. That is easily arranged. Uh, where did this medallion come from? Why, from my father. 
was chief before me. No more of that. You got more jewels like this. Where are they? Take me to them. That is impossible. Then it is impossible for me to return your son. But, Your Highness, there are no more jewels like that among my people. Don't lie to me, Ramad. If you got one medallion, you got more. Where are they? In the realm of the ancient ones. Where is that? In their city under the sea. What kind of a nonsense is this? You're lying, Ramad. There is no such city. I do not lie. I know there is a city under the sea. For I have been there. Then take me there or you'll never see your son again. It is forbidden for anyone but a new chief of my people to descend into the city of the ancient one. I don't care a handful of space dust for your ridiculous customs. If you don't take me to the city for those gems, I'll bless this entire valley. You mean you will destroy my people? That's exactly what I mean. If you don't think... Your I... Highness, look, a spaceship, Commander Corey's ship. This Corey's ship. Quick, back to our ship. There is time. He's coming to the land. You're right, Malengo. Hurry. Hide before he gets close enough to see exactly what's going on down here. But where can we hide? He'll find us. You hide in that thick clump of bushes over there. I'll stay here in plain sight. While he's capturing me, you can get him with the paralyzer ray. Now hurry. Yes, Your Highness. You are afraid of this man in the spaceship. It is our liberator, just as it was foretold in the chronicles of the ancient one. You can't harm our liberator. I won't let you. You won't, eh? We'll see about that. <coughs> Be ready, Malengo, when Corey comes to the rest. The Baccarati, all right. He's beating that old man. Trying to drag him into a ship. Let's get him. All right, Baccarati, break it up. I'll get his ray gun first. Let go of me, Corey. Commander, the old man's unconscious. Baccarati knocked him out. Getting pretty brave, aren't you, Baccarati? Beating up an old man all by yourself? Get them, Malengo. Yes, Your Highness. <laughs> Splendid, Malengro. You got both of them. This is the last time Commander Corey will meddle in the affairs of Sanity. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Hi, Mr. Hi, Mr. Weatherburn, Weatherburn, man. Hi, you fellas. Back already? Yeah, we want some more of those swell space coins and three more contest entry blanks for the guys in our Blue Demon Club. Ah, oh, sure, you bet. Here you are. Uh, your space coins are right there in the album, along with your contest entry blank. And they're absolutely free. You don't have to buy anything. Thanks a lot, Mr. Weatherford, man. Now the Blue Demons will have even more chances to win the Rocket Clubhouse and the $1,500. Well, maybe we'll win a Schwinn bite for every guy in Demons. <laughs> sure. And don't forget about the 1,000 other prizes. A thousand pieces of official Space Patrol equipment. And you know, you can get even more of those fine space coins free in packages of hot vaults and cereal. The hot balls from package with a picture of Commander Corey and Cadet Happy on the front. You betcha, Mr. Weatherbird man. We're going to get some packages of hot Ralston with the free space coins right now. Then, all of us blue demons are going to come back here and get going on the Name the Planet contest again. Be seeing you. Good, good. But you better hurry. There's not much time left, Enter. Right, Space Patrollers. Time is running out. But you still have time to get your free space coins and contest entry blank at your Weatherbird shoe store. So do it today. That's your Weatherbird shoe store. <laughs> And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, Under the Sea of Planet X. Buzz and Happy blast off for Planet X to investigate a mysterious spacephone signal that seems to come from the Great Sea. Believing the series of dashes are a distress signal from the United Planets personnel who escaped from Prince Baccarati, Buzz searches the nearby coast. Sighting Baccarati's ship in the crater valley, they land in time to stop Baccarati from beating Ramed, chief of a tribe of peaceful natives. But Buzz and Abby are in turn overpowered by Dr. Malengro, who has been lurking in ambush nearby, armed with a paralyzer ray gun. Helpless from the effects of the blast, the space patrolmen look on as Baccarati and Malengro revive the native chief. He's coming around all right, Your Highness. Oh, get him to his feet. Come on, Ramed, get up. Uh, those men lying there, what have you done to them? Temporarily paralyzed with this ray gun. This ramad is one of the least powerful of my weapons. Remember that in case your people will try to rescue you. Who are these men? From another planet too, I suppose? Yes. This is the great Commander Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol of the United Planets. My most formidable enemy. And look at him now. If he is your enemy, he must be good. 
A liberator who came from another world to save us from a tyrant, just as the ancient ones foretold. Oh, there's your liberator. Your ancient ones are either bad prophets, or they were thinking of someone else. Malenko, put Corey and the cadet into my ship and tie them up. Yes, Excellency. Shall we put them in with Tamu? Nah, there isn't enough room in that compartment. Put them in the first compartment on the left and lock them up. Yes, Your Highness. Leaving Buzz and Happy securely bound and locked in Baccarati's ship, the Prince and Malengro followed Chief Ramed around the rims of the craters and across the valley to a steep bluff. Finally, Ramed pauses before a jutting rock formation. We are at the entrance to the tunnel. Where? I don't see it. Slip in behind that large rock. Uh, you go first. You're next, Malengro. Yes, Your Highness. Hmm. There isn't much light in here, Malengro. Uh, have you a thermal light? Yes, Excellency. Here. Why, uh, this is no tunnel. It's just a cave. It ends a few yards back. What are you trying to do, Ramid? The back wall is a concealed gate. I will open it. There's a hidden lever in this recess. Highness, it's amazing. It must take tremendous power to open that gate. It is a secret force of the ancient one. Yeah, probably only electricity. See, the tunnel is lighted. Yes. You will no longer need your little light. Ramed, just who were these ancient ones? A race of wise men and women who lived on this world thousands of years ago. Why did they live under the sea? Their science told them that this world would be struck with a storm of giant stones from the sky. Meteors. That's what caused the craters. Yes. So they built a new city to the east in another deep valley and covered the city with a dome. Then they leveled a huge mountain and the sea rushed in and covered the city. The deep water protected them from the meteors. Yes. What became of these people, these ancient ones, when the great rain of stones was over and the air was cooled? The ancient ones found that the world was not the beautiful one it once was. The air was foul to their sensitive lungs. So they built great ships and fled into space to seek another world. Well, it's fortunate they aren't here now to interfere with my plans. Let's get started down this tunnel. Must be a tremendous distance to the sea. It is a great distance, but you will be there very soon. Stand here, if you will. That's it. When I press a lever, the very floor of the tunnel will move and carry you down to the city under the sea. Mm, conveyor belt, a moving platform. Amazing. I suggest that you lay down. The floor moves swiftly. All right, all right, hurry up. Let's get started. Come on, Ramit. Get on. We're ready. I'm not going with you. Ramit, get on the platform. Do you hear me? Now, well, evil one, you will go along through the city under the sea. Stop this platform. Stop it, I say. May the ancient ones forgive me for deviling their beautiful city. I will close the gate and return to my Ramit! people. Elsewhere, in a compartment of Baccarati's ship, Buzz and Happy, recovered from the effects of the paralyzer ray, are struggling vainly to free their tightly bound hands and feet. Boy, Malengro really did a job on us this time. Oh. Commander, somebody's at the door. Baccarati must be back. I returned as quickly as I could, Commander Corey. I am Ramad, chief of the people of the Valley of Craters. Believe me, Ramad, we're certainly glad to see you. I'll say we are. If you will permit me, I shall release your bond. Thanks. What happened to Baccarati and Malengro? They're in the city under the sea. The moving platform should have carried them there by now. Smoking rocket, you mean there actually is a city under the sea? Yes. Built hundreds of generations ago by the ancient one. And people live in it? No. Not since the ancient ones left this world in spaceships similar to your own. Perhaps you are a descendant of the Ancient One, returned to free my people from this tyrant, Baccarati. It was foretold by the Ancient One. No, I'm afraid not. We've been after Baccarati for a long time. We came here because of a signal we received from space. 
from the ancient one. No, from what we call a spacophone. We first picked up the signal three days ago. Three days ago, you said. That was the day my son disappeared. He was captured by Baccarati's men. That was the day I went to the tunnel and pressed another secret lever. Another lever? When the ancient ones left this world, they told those left behind of a tyrant who would someday come to enslave them. They told us of a secret lever that would summon a liberator from out of space. Smoke and rockets, they set that equipment hundreds of years ago, and, and it works now? More than hundreds, I think. Thousands. So, Ronald, you sent that signal when Baccarati captured your son. And 20 other of my people. But my son is here in this ship. Why didn't you tell us before? It is not our way to needlessly impose our affairs on strangers. Well, gee, let's get him out of here. If he's okay, I I'll bet he wants to help us go after Baccarati. No, my friend. He must not enter the city until it is his time to succeed me as chief. All right, Ronald. We'll probably need you to show us around. After we get your son out of here, we'll go to my ship and get some weapons. Then tackle Baccarati. With ever-increasing speed, the moving platform carries the terrified Baccarati and Malengro down through the tunnel, mile after mile, until they are under the sea. Then the platform slows down and finally comes to a stop. Dazedly, Baccarati and Malengro get to their feet and look in amazement at a city of dazzling beauty bathed in soft lights of many colors. High above them, a transparent dome holds back the dark blue waters of the great sea. Look at these buildings. They're studded with jewels. There are even jewels in the streets. I'm rich. I'm richer than anyone in the universe. Let's chip off as many of these jewels as we can. Use the butt of your razor. As Baccarati and Malengro wander through the streets of the undersea city, roughly chipping away the largest gems from building walls and streets, Buzz, Happy, and Chief Ramed descend through the long tunnel. Then, cautiously, as the moving platform stops, they enter the city. Listen. Did they? Yeah. What is it? I don't know. Let's find out. It's Baccarati and Malengro, shipping gems in the wall. Ready, Half? Yes, sir. Rush him. Come on. Hurry! Lango, get them! All right, Baccarati. You gonna call it quits, or do you want to go back up that tunnel unconscious? You win. Get the weapons, Hat. And those gems. They must not take the jewels from the city. Yes, drop them, both of you. You won't be needing them. Smoke and rockets. Baccarati's got an emerald as big as a hen's egg. I will relieve you of that emerald. Ramad. Thanks, Ramad, you old fool. There's your emerald. <laughs> Commander, Baccarati's got his blast gun. Yes, and I'm going to use it. Don't try it. If you break that dome, you'll have the whole ocean in on us. Then stay right where you are. Come on, Malengro, follow me. Yes, Your Highness. Happy and happy. Can't escape it. They may find some weapon they can use against us. They just ducked around that corner, Commander. We're gaining on them. There they are. They're heading for that metal door. Stop, Baccarati. Let's see you get in here, sir. Oh, doggone it. If we'd just been a second sooner, they've locked themselves in this chamber. Well, all we've got to do is just wait for them to come out. They can't stay in there forever. I know. I don't like the looks of this. Yeah, but there's no other door. It's just a metal chamber. Yeah, but look, it's a column extending clear up to the dome. I wonder what it's for. Hey, what's happening? Look up at the top of the dome. Something shooting up to the surface. A big torpedo or something. See if you can open that door now, Hap. Chamber's empty. They're gone. This is an emergency escape hatch. Dr. Roddy Malengro shot to the surface inside of a watertight chamber. Wow, they sure took an awful chain. It may have been ejected automatically. Commander. They got away, Ramad. I'm sorry. It was my fault. But I am very grateful. You've saved the lives of my son and all my people. I will order a feast in your honor. Thanks, Ramad, but some other time. But Dr. cannot harm my people now. Probably not. We'll go back to our spaceship and search the great sea till we find him. I know our great danger is over. Baccarati will leave us alone now, I know it. Because I've got my son's jewel medallion back. Baccarati dropped it in the fight. It is a sign of good fortune. Well, maybe, Ramid, but just the same. 
Don't forget where that spacophone signal switch is. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Look for the sign of the Weatherbird Space Patrollers. Look for the sign of the Weatherbird at your Weatherbird shoe store, because that's where you get your free Name the Planet Contest entry blank and those swell space coins. And remember, you can also get space coins in packages of good, hot Wilson. Instant or regular, but hurry. Time's getting short. There's still time to get going on the Name the Planet Contest at your Weatherbird shoe store. That's your Weatherbird shoe store. And now, a preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure. Buzz and Hathi are trying to drive off one of Prince Baccarati's atmosphere ships before it destroys a small submarine in the great sea of Planet X. We're driving him off, Hap. Yes, sir. He's cut on all rockets, but what happened to the sub? We'll take care of it later. We've chased that atmosphere ship away. Commander, they're firing at us. They want to play rough. You'll cooperate. Stand by to fire space torpedoes. We're hit. We've knocked out our starboard rockets. We're out of control. Commander, we're going to crash. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Sea Monster of Planet X, when Instant Wilson and Regular Austin again present Space Patrol! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, Stephen Robertson, Dick Beals, and Tom McKee. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Instant Wilson and regular Austin again present Space Patrol! This is Dick Tufeld in Los Angeles reporting on the famous jet plane assigned to the vital Air Force mission of defending America's homeland, Lockheed's F-94C Starfire. In a moment, we'll hear from Tony LeVere, the well-known record-breaking test pilot on the Starfire. Within seconds after warning, this radar-controlled interceptor can be off the ground and streaking to 45,000 feet or higher. Packing 48 rockets, it can fly and fight in sunshine or darkness at speeds of more than 600 miles per hour. Now, Tony LeVere, tape recorded this morning at a California air base. You know, good health is important to a test pilot, and I have to stay in top condition. I get lots of rest and eat plenty of good food. That's why I like a good cereal for breakfast, like rice checks or wheat checks. They have real energy, and they taste swell. Why don't you try them? No other cereal, puffed or flaked, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. So take a tip from Tony LeVere, Joe Lynch, and other top test pilots. Make your cereals rice checks and wheat checks. And now, attention all space patrollers. Now you can have the big, complete catalog of exciting new space patrol toys and official space patrol equipment. It's yours absolutely free. Just mail a postcard to Space Products, Box 591, Hollywood, California. That's Space Products, Box 591, Hollywood, California. <laughs> Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast for armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.